Well, welcome friends to our first annual meeting of the Wesley Seminary Leadership Circle. Uh, kind of on the heels of last week's Giving Thanks Tuesday, we wanted to take uh, this opportunity to thank you for your generous um, giving and faithful giving to the Wesley Seminary and for supporting the mission of the seminary. Uh, we also want to keep you updated on some of the exciting things that have happened this year and things that we've got planned for next year. And uh, even though these have been extraordinary times, there's some really exciting things that we're doing. We wanted to share those with you. Uh, as we get started today, I'll open us with a word of prayer. After that, we'll hear from Dr. Durr, our president, and then our board chair, Dr. Connie Erpelding. And then after that, uh, Dr. Luigi Pena Ronda will share uh, some information on an exciting program that launched this year, the Spanish language pilot program. And one of our students has uh, joined us today and we'll share some information as well. And then we'll wrap things up with a discussion with our VP of Academic Affairs, Dr. Absin Joseph, just to hear kind of what's on his radar screen uh, for this upcoming year. So uh, let's start off, uh, if you would, with a word of prayer. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this day. Lord, I'm just so thankful for each person on this call and those that will be watching in the future. I thank you for the generosity, Lord, that you have put on their hearts uh, towards Wesley Seminary. Lord, uh, we're just so blessed. You continue to bless us with uh, amazing people, amazing programs. And Lord, more than anything, we just want to honor you with all that we do and say. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you would be with every person today. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. And I will turn things over to Dr. Durr. Thank you, Joel. Boy, it, it sure is wonderful to see some of your faces gathered here together in this way. And oh man, do we wish we could gather around a common table and uh, have some lunch together and a fellowship time with one another. Um, those are the days we're looking forward to once again. But for now, thank you for giving some time today to join us in this way um, that unfortunately has become a, <laughs> all too common uh, for us in these days. And on behalf of the entire Wesley family, thank you so much for your generous support. It's because of your faithful giving that Wesley is just, a, that we're able to fulfill our mission of preparing Christian leaders to engage in missional ministry locally glo and globally and to reach our vision. Wesley's vision to become transformational, spiritually impacting the lives of our students, faculty and staff, becoming accessible financially and academically for underrepresented populations, for becoming global. And you'll hear a little bit about that today, serving the global church through theological education contextualized for their unique needs and becoming comprehensive, serving the church through a variety of educational and equipping means, including, but definitely not limited to graduate theological education. In a few moments, you'll hear of a new initiative that helps us meet that vision to become accessible, global, transformational, and comprehensive. And it is because of giving from friends like you that we are even able to dream about reaching that vision. So thank you. On behalf of Wesley's mission, as demonstrated by your generous financial support, thank you. We recognize that these days are challenging for all of us, they're challenging for you in your ministry and life setting. They're challenging for the Wesley Seminary team and especially challenging for our students. And your continued support makes it possible for many of our students to continue to pursue ministry training in spite of the COVID obstacles they have faced. And in this way, you are partners with us in ministry and you are partners with them in ministry faithfully serving the Lord in times of plenty and in these times of challenge. Thank you for living the generous life. And it is our prayer that the Lord will bless you in this season to overflowing above and beyond with his wonderful gifts. We are Wesley, as we say around here, and you belong here. Thank you. Thank you again for being a part of the Wesley family. Thank you, Dr. Durr. Now we'll hear from Dr. Erpelding, our board chair. 
Well, it is such a pleasure to uh, see your faces and to just come together today. Uh, and I just want to express uh, a very sincere thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, acknowledging that 2020 has certainly been a challenging year. And you had many places that you could share your generosity. You had many things uh, that probably other places that you could be generous, but you chose Wesley. And we are so grateful that you uh, took that passion and you joined us uh, as we uh, try to live out the mission that God has called us to. You know, uh, I was thinking that perhaps never in my lifetime, uh, has there been a more important time for the preparation of Christian ministry leaders, uh, leaders who can share the hope of the gospel? And so, again, we are so grateful that um, you are joining us on that mission. I want you to know on behalf of the, of the Wesley Seminary Board that we are incredibly proud of Dr. Durr, Dean Joseph and their team and how they have responded to the pandemic this year and met the needs of the many students that are Wesley. But perhaps even more importantly, what I want you to know is how proud we are of the visionary scope of leadership prior to the pandemic. These um, are challenging times, but it was through the visionary leadership that we were already preparing for meeting needs of students. And then when the pandemic came along, many things were already in place for us to smoothly pivot. And so I, wanna, I want to uh, give great credit to the leadership and I want you to know how proud the board is of that. Um, you know, there's a little magnet that I keep uh, very close to me. Uh, and if you don't have it, perhaps Joel can get one for you, but it shares uh, the mission. Uh, of Wesley. And around the outside, it shares some vision. And Dr. Durr actually alluded to this. And every morning, the team gets up and they're thinking transformational, global, comprehensive, accessible. And that's what the board is thinking too. And so it's important for you to know that we take our jobs seriously. And one of the things that we want to do is uh, become more effective in our governance. And so we are developing skills as a board through partnering with Intrust, which is an organization that supports um, the missional vitality of theological schools. And so uh, it's just important for you to hear from me. Thank you. We are supporting our leadership. We are so proud of them. And we are so grateful of how you um, support Wesley. Because as Dr. Durr says, you belong here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Ripple Ding. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Thank you. And now we'll have, hear from Dr. Luigi Pena Ronda with uh, his uh, information on the Spanish language pilot program. Thank you, and uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, it is it is an honor to uh, be a part of a seminary. I've been uh, teaching at the seminary since uh, 2014, originally from uh, Colombia, South America. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, is, has been exciting about the journey at Wesley Seminary is that we are truly committed about education uh, for the church. And the church is the church of Jesus Christ and uh, it is a global church. And the church has always been on mission, which means that then we must be on mission as well. And as we, we see so many challenges in the globe, uh, we've been asking ourselves questions. How do we serve the global church? And how do we remove obstacles to bring education to places where they don't have uh, privileges like we do sometimes? Uh, and so we're been working on these projects. And I want to share with you a little video of an initiative that started uh, a few years ago. But this year, we, we started with phase one of the initiative, a pilot project to reach uh, Latino and Latina 
um, ministers to provide education for them. And I'll share, I'll share a little more after I show the video. Since the beginning of the seminary, uh, the commitment to serve uh, the church globally has been foundational for everything we do. And that's why um, a, a Spanish initiative was started that the seminary would provide um, teaching and education in Spanish. Uh, and as we look at the global south, we see the church is thriving and is alive and well. And there are tremendous missionary movements happening uh, all over the global south right now. In fact, uh, Latin Americans are leading the way in missionary work up among Muslims. So we, we see all these trends and all this movement, and we are committed to serving the church. And a few years ago, we asked ourselves, um, how do we remove the obstacles? And, and the obstacles have to do with uh, economies. Um, uh, the reality is education is expensive and traditionally it really has been uh, uh, something that rewards privilege. So how do we come up with a system of education that, that means liberation for the church, for a minister that, uh, as you saw in the video, uh, will, will not have the same level of income and even with a master's level education, their salaries will not necessarily change. Uh, the trend in most, uh, in most of our contexts is that pastors are bivocational, that they are the ones that sustain the ministry with their own work, uh, but that they still need this education. So, so we came up with this idea, what if for the cost of uh, the tuition of one student, we could educate 40 of them? Uh, and how do we serve Latinos here in the U.S. and Latinos in Latin America? Uh, and have been working really, really hard on that so that we create opportunities. Uh, we were aiming for 40 students, and uh, the reality is 49 of them started. and uh, We've had 95% retention. Uh, I just got an email yesterday saying that we have already enrolled uh, 22 uh, students from Latin America and 12 students, Latinos in the United States, for the year 2021. Uh, so we're seeing that we are removing obstacles and creating those opportunities. 
and we are very grateful. I love missions. I love going on mission trips. Um, and the reality is I realized that when I go maybe for a week or five days, uh, uh, and it is a great experience. Usually I invest about $1,000, $1,200 to go on a mission trip and perhaps have the impact of serving for five days, six days in the place. Um, but now with this model, we realize for that much money, we could be actually helping with the education of a pastor that's already in their context, that knows the people, that knows the infrastructure, but what they need is tools. And uh, so I, I've kind of come to learn that my rich in a week, uh, compared to the investment of investing in the ed education of ministers, it, it's just not comparable. Uh, so we're trying to create this culture of, of enabling them and we know we have a framework, just a window of opportunity to train pastors and they themselves will become the seminary professors and the pastors and leaders that will take it on to a level that we will not be able to do. But they have in themselves the gift of changing the world. So uh, your prayer, your support uh, is so valuable to the work that's being done and it is truly shaping leadership around the world. I have the privilege of uh, introducing to you uh, someone that is, is, is a friend, is a colleague, and she happens to be also a student. And as a professor, uh, we love education. We love giving people uh, what, what's been given to us. But every once in a while, you have students that take everything you give them and they can do things that I never even imagined are possible. As, uh, students that can see beyond what we can see and can take what we give them and turn them into something beyond measure. And it is an honor for me to introduce to you Janita Colon, who, who is that kind of person. Uh, once you hear from her, there, there's nothing that can stop what God, God can do in her mind. And uh, it is so wonderful to have her here. And Janita Colon is or originally from Puerto Rico and she is part of our MDiv program in Spanish. Um, she serves a, as a global missions director in her local church in Oviedo, Florida. Uh, she's also the women's moderator and works with finance and stewardship committees uh, for the Presbyterian Church. Janira has served as the moderator of the South Atlantic Hispanic Women's Synod uh, on planning committees uh, that relate to scholarships offered to Hispanic and Latina women. Uh, she's a candidate to be ordained as a reverend once she completes her master's degree next year. Uh, she currently lives in Florida with her husband and they serve at El Redentor Presbyterian Church for the last 26 years. Um, she owns a mortgage company and a real estate company, and there's nothing that she cannot do in her mind, and God has given her tremendous vision. And I want to invite her to share with you a little bit of what, what's meant to her to be a part of Wesley Seminary. Hello, everybody. God bless you. Um, Luis, you're going to make me cry before I even start. <laughs> um, it is a privilege for me to be here with you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I want to share a little bit of um, what's, what's been happening in my life and the impact of Wesley in my life. As Luis said, my name is Janira Colon, and I am originally from Puerto Rico. I have lived in Florida for the past 26 years. My calling to the ministry came at very young age at my Bible study group in my home in Puerto Rico. Right then and there, I knew that our Lord was calling me on to serve him. However, life happened. I married very young, became a mother quite fast, and very quickly became a single mother with a million work and personal commit commitments and more importantly, with the challenge of being a mother of two beautiful daughters without, without my biggest blessing. 
time of continuing my studies and being able to answer that call seems further and further every day. I was turning into that woman without hope, without a future, and without being able to respond to the sublime call in my life. I became that woman that only dreams, but do not have the resource and the support to be able to reach those dreams. Once I was able to move to the United States, I lost hope completely. I would tell myself, continuing my studies in another language will be impossible. You can say goodbye to that idea. Many times I ask God for forgiveness for not being able to respond to his calling from the very beginning. I resigned myself, but keep working for God in every endurance I will take on with effort, dedication, and love, giving everything of me. About three years ago, while well, I completely my pastoral studies in the Asbury Seminary, I got the opportunity to continue as a graduate level with the Wesley Seminary, a master program in divinity that was 100% in Spanish, amen, and online. I applied immediately and was accepted into the program. I want to share with you all that this blessing has been incredible. I am no longer that woman without hope, without a future and without dreams. Quite the contrary, I have been able to respond to that calling from, from God with affirmation, with hope, with a lot of study and with preparation, with the most distinguished honor to be able to say, here I am God, send me in. Wesley has become family for me in support and in education that, that has helped me go from that woman, a Hispanic person, an immigrant, and a dreamer, to no longer say, I'm not be able to do something, but rather to see my dreams of academic career become a reality. I am now in my last academy year of my graduate program. And I wanna to say to the Wesley Seminary, it is a place of poor blessing in my life, in my ministry, and for every other person that has answered the call from God with commitment and academy excellence. Wesley is a safe place where as an immigrant, Hispanic, minority, and many times people without hope we can achieve an academy education of high quality that can continue to bless us and continue to expand the kingdom of God and the hope that comes with it. Through my studies and preparation, I have been given the opportunity to take the role of spiritual counselor for the Hispanic Presbyterian woman as a national level. At the moment, I am a, minist a ministry candidate in my Presbyterian denomination and have been able to work in different ministries at a local and denominational level, representing myself as a Hispanic woman, as a wife, as a mother, grandmother, leader, and work that can still put in effort and finish my graduate studies and in my mother language, Spanish. I wanna say thank you, Wesley. Thank you to all of you for this excellent opportunity. As Dr. Dare was um, talking about Wesley vision, I can say, I, I realize and I see that vision in me. I see that Wesley have met that vision in our, in our life as a Hispanic, as an immigrant, as a minority. At what happened right now in the United States where minorities has become to be on the margins. Wesley is said, you are not on the margin because you are part of the mission. Like Dr. Luigi was saying, 
Um, we are all a mission. We are all in the, in the mission. And Wesley has said, you as a minority are part of this mission because it is Jesus' mission and everybody is included in that mission. And I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of you. Um, and as, as uh, Mr. Hahn was going um, around and saying, Dr. Durr, Dr. Luigi, um, I will, I will think of myself one day, I will be that woman to be Dr. Colon. In the name of Jesus, I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for everything that you're doing for us. We really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you, Janira. Thank you. That was incredible. Very cool. Not a dry eye in the house, I don't think, right now. No. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you for sharing your heart and your passion and uh, for the Spanish language program. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, I would like to uh, invite Dr. Absin Joseph, our Vice President of Academic Affairs, to uh, take a few questions from me, if that's possible. Let me... Uh... I'll do whatever you ask. <laughs> How are you, sir? Doing well, thank you. Hi, everyone. Excellent. Well, I just wanted to uh, have you on today to share, like I said, a little bit about this last year and what's on your radar for 2021. So, I mean, this last year was a pretty normal year, right? Nothing out of the oh. <laughs> Of course, as, as, as far as normal can be dis described, um, our lives uh, have been upended. And um, the Dr. Durr talked earlier already about, about pivoting and, um, and uh, Dr. Epelding also mentioned the same thing. Um, there's a there's a beauty in the fact that we were already online, but then there's also the challenge in that our students' lives were upended. Uh, the way ministry, as we knew it, the way we used to do ministry, changed. So the faculty had to pivot, you know, in the midst of the semester, because the the way. The, the, the places of ministry and how we did ministry, because that changed, then the assignments, the learning outcomes, we had to kind of pivot and figure out what to do. And it was a good opportunity for us uh, as a seminary to begin to put in practice things that we've been talking about that we felt like we needed to do to improve on. And we were just forced to do that. And because the faculty was already thinking about these things conceptually, we were able to actually uh, pivot in a way that we could care for the students, um, providing not just teaching, but also providing courses that help them care for self, but also care for their congregation. And um, God's been good to us. It's been a very difficult year. It's been a very difficult year, emotionally and, and in many ways, but we can we can say that uh, Ebenezer, up until now, God has God has been with us. Amen. I know I was personally disappointed. Dr. Wilkinson and I were going to accompany you, I think, with two, two classes mm -hmm. and many others on a trip to Israel this last June. And that, uh, yeah. obviously. We had 80 people. I was glutton for punishment, right? <laughs> we had 80 people going with us to Israel. We were excited. It was going to be great. Um, uh, but, you know, God knows. Um, we were still hoping, not, not this June, uh, next June um, to still go. It will have been the time to go to Greece, uh, but we'll we'll just reassess when the time comes to determine do we then go to Israel as as planned. Because many of the people said that whenever the opportunity presents itself, they will go again. So we may then just go to Israel and then reset and then go to Greece. But we'll we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll, we'll look forward to the time when we can do that again. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So looking back on this year, 2020 such as it was, what do you, do you think was the most exciting thing this year as far as uh, Wesley Seminary? Most exciting thing that happened? Or? Well, I think, I think the most exciting thing uh, goes back to what I started talking about earlier. I think it's the resilience of the faculty, uh, their openness to, to change, their openness to, uh, to do more with less. Uh, because, of the, because of COVID, then we had them tighten our belt so even as we were tightening our belt, we were asking them to do more, and they leaned in. Uh, 
uh, to that to that reality. Uh, I think the students as well, in terms of the way in which they were able to um, to adapt to the new realities. Um, uh, interestingly enough, because of uh, because of the onboarding of the of the Spanish language uh, initiative and the students, our you know our our enrollment went up, which didn't mean our resources increased, but we had more people, um, more students to to care for, and there, there's a lot of lot of uh, excitement about the 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 solutions and the innovations that we were able to bring about because of the crisis and everyone from you know staff students uh, the administration the board i mean the this is the most i mean i guess i can say this is the most engaged that we've seen the board um so everyone has gathered around the seminary and we can feel that we can feel the prayers and great days are ahead so i'm excited for that I know you've spent a lot of time on uh, the Global Initiative Project. Would you like to share maybe a little bit about that? Uh, what that yeah. is, you, maybe the timeline for that? And sure. So right before COVID, um, we proposed, we presented to the university board what's called the Global Initiative um, Project, and that's a kind of that was a three-year project that uh, identified several areas uh, in terms of student success issues of uh, technological development, curriculum development, uh, and then partnership development that will help the, the seminary increase its footprint uh, globally. There were a lot of um, partners like in Africa, in you know the Philippines and Asia, uh, Latin America, uh, who were approaching us and we thought, okay, what if we actually had developed a strategy that allow us to do what these partners are asking in terms of bringing help, do things like uh, the global initi uh, the Spanish initiative, which is part of the larger global initiative plan, while at the same time being fiscally responsible. So how do we do those two things together? And, um, and so it covers three years, it's about five continents, um, and it, there's a possibility to add French uh, also in terms of French language uh, in, in the process. So all of that's part of the Global Initiative uh, project. Um, the funding for that has been approved by the board. But again, because of COVID, uh, some of that's kind of been rolled back. And we hope that uh, as things change and go back to a new normal, <laughs> we, can, we can begin to implement what that, what that looks like. I know a part of that uh, involved Rwanda, and you and I had uh, planned a trip to Rwanda, but that's been put on hold as well. Um, you want to speak to that maybe just a bit? Sure. So one of the one of the first phase of that project was uh, developing uh, our partnership with a school in Rwanda, which is the Africa College of Theology. Um, Rwanda is in a situation where um, because of because of uh, false doctrines and false teaching, and primarily the uh, faith and wealth gospel, where pastors, unfortunately, are taking advantage of a lot of parishioners, the government came down really hard and, and just decided to, you know, close, close churches, and then demanded that pastors be theologically trained, and before they can actually uh, serve. Mm -hmm. So as a result, um, the, the, one of the schools there wanted to provide a solution to that, so they reached out to us so that it, to see in what ways that we can then help provide the education that will train the people that will train the pastors so that, that they can uh, they can they can serve. Dr. Dern and I had the privilege to go there and visit with them. Uh, they also had a chance their leaders to come to Wesley Seminary. Um, um, Joel had you know chance to also meet with the developing uh, the, the development office of that denomination as well. So we can figure out how to partner with them on multiple level, both in terms of um, helping the school itself, helping the kind of human resources development, but also partner with them in terms of uh, you know financial development as well. Um, so some of that is on hold because there, there are things that you can do on Zoom, there are things you just can't do on Zoom. Right. And yeah. global partnership development is just not doable on Zoom. Um, but um, actually, just 
two days ago, I got an email from uh, the, the the dean there because there's a there's a faculty member there who uh, who's uh, who wants to start studying. Aaron, this is an email I need to forward to you. <laughs> so some some things continue to happen. We're in conversation, but big picture, there's some pause um, because of the current. Nice. Well, I know I've had the pleasure of working with you on uh, some grant. Uh, applications mm -hmm. and we were fortunate enough this year to receive our first grant. Yes. Uh, good first step, but we're very hopeful and working hard uh, for other grant opportunities as well. In fact, we're, we've got one that we're getting ready to submit this Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to talk about any of any of those or? Yeah, so um, we're, again, this it's one of the aspects of the life of the seminary that we wanted to dive into. So far, we've had more no's than yeses, but every single one of them have given us an opportunity to know more about ourselves and 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 re reassert the mission. Uh, we're not after the dollars. We're after people who want to support what we believe is the mission, and um, it, that's it's taking time for them to really get a sense of what we're trying to accomplish. Um, on Friday, we're, we're submitting this draft for review. The grant itself is due January seven, and this is uh, science for seminaries. So we have two faculty members who are looking at and who are developing, they will be redeveloping four core classes in the MDiv program and in a way of bringing science into them. So it's two Bible classes, two um, pastoral care classes using ideas of neuroscience and psychodynamic approaches to talk about how, you know, spiritual transformation and pastoral care and, uh, and other things. So there were over 200 schools that submitted. They've kept less than 20, and we are one of those. And there's eight, uh, eight $75,000 grants that will be given. And uh, the idea then is both in terms of it will help with professional development for the faculty. We'll do a main campus event that's kind of science theology uh, theme. And um, there's some, some very exciting things that, that, that we hope to do if uh, if we're successful. Awesome. Well, all of this leads into, and it's a term that I've heard since I've started here at the seminary, resourcing the church or resourcing mm -hmm. the local church. Do you want to share your thoughts on that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, as as you all know, like the, the mission, the mission of what's the seminary is to prepare leaders uh, who do the mission um, to fulfill that mission locally and globally. Uh, so with the so when we talk about the local church, you know, the global is not international because you know the world is at our doorstep. The local is also not national. It's you know it's everywhere. Like so, from that standpoint, how do we how do we help our students get a sense of what they can do to help their church beyond what they do within the classroom? Um, so a lot of the grants that we've gone after are grants that will have allowed us to do that. Um, and while this has, while the grants haven't panned out, the mission continues. And one way we've been doing that is through the webinar series that we've just started, um, where um, we've been inviting, um, you know, scholars and, and uh, people that can actually allow, um, just discuss things that are, that matter to the church in a, in a, can I use the word non-threatening? I don't know if, English sometimes fails me. So it, it, in, in a very low key that we can provide value added to them. Um, and we started with 55, then 90 people. And I think we have over 200 that's already signed up for the next one. Yes. And it's it's trying to figure out, okay, what are the ways in which we can, we can leverage uh, the human resources that we have? Um, we know, you know, Aaron Perry, for example, is doing the podcast. We have the webinar series. And what are other ways that we can we can provide value added um, to, to the church? And it's just the beginning. Um, we we are limited in our capacity, but we're trying to figure out how do we then maximize what we have, and then as those things settle, then we can see okay, what's the next thing that we can do in order to help uh, in order to help the church. Uh, there's been a lot of good responses to the webinar series, so we hope that. Um, as it increases, we can we can do more with that. Excellent. Yeah, please turn tune in next Thursday, the seventeenth at two p.m. Dr. Lenny Lucchetti for that one. So, thank you so much, Dr. Joseph. I appreciate your time. My and pleasure.
I want to thank everyone for joining us today and for those that will be watching in the future. And Dr. Joseph, would you mind uh, leading us in a word of prayer as we close today? Yeah, I'll be honored. Let us pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for love. Thank you for faithfulness towards us. Uh, thank you for each and every one here. Thank you for their willingness to partner with us as seminary in fulfilling, in fulfilling the mission that you've given us. Um, we thank you for their generosity. Uh, we thank you for, uh, for their love and passion uh, for the seminary. Father, we pray that you'll continue to be with us. Give us wisdom as we steward the mission, as we steward the resources. We thank you for, uh, for the life and, 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 and ministry of uh, Dr. Durr, and thank you for the way you've, you've enveloped and, and protected uh, her and Wayne. And, and we thank you for the life of, of Dr. Dr. Wilson. Um, uh, we pray, God, that you'll continue to, to bless the family and journey with them, Father, as, as they continue to, uh, to mourn and grieve, but also rejoice for, for, for the days that you've granted them. Um, we pray, O oh God, for each and every one of us um, who either anxiety or other cases, there's so many uh, ways in which we've been touched by this pandemic. We pray that you'll continue to give us the strength that we need to continue to trust and, and, and rely on you. Uh, we, we thank you for the time that we've been able to spend together. Continue to guide us and be with us. And uh, we thank you for Joel, uh, for, his, for his leadership. Uh, and for his uh, passion for Western Seminary and love for, for your people. Bless us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any questions whatsoever, please call me, text me, email me. Be glad to answer any questions that you might have. And just uh, pray that God would continue to bless you and that you have a very Merry Christmas if we don't talk before then. Blessings. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, same to you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Is that what you wanted it to be?